And so apparently some Zira has been played at what? some point because I would not expect that ban unless someone on the Liberty team has played them recently. Well, um, yeah. Uh, so Apple Fire is the mid player for this team, and she is a really been... good player. Apple Fire is a she? Yes, she is. Oh, that's freaking baller. So I can't believe that she, uh, you know, she hasn't been playing Zyra at all, and so Zyra getting banned. Maybe it was like, you know, I've been thinking about playing Zyra support uh, uh, whenever I get a chance to play some more law. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I don't, I haven't seen anything that would lead me to believe that Zyra. Zyra worth the band right there. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Alistar leads. Oh, wait. Oh. GG Ice played Zyra in the last game. Ooh, that's and he went like 8, 3, and 9. Alright, yep, definitely worthy of a ban. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, looking at these six bans, boom, Twist of Fate says, Sorry, Majestics, no more godlike mid for you. Shen, global ban, you know, for obvious reasons. Malphite, another champion that was played on team no name too lazy yeah, to we've got Syra, alistar and lee sin uh you know all pretty much staple bands some bands that might be considered uh nautilus was not a band so we might see a nautilus in this game uh possibly a morgana you know was morgana also not banned aurelia uh, i don't know if we'll see aurelia that's more of a griffle style of champion Still definitely a strong pick, uh, but right now the sad mummy getting locked in here. I like it. Yeah, actually, you know, mummy again. You know, we were talking about earlier about Rumble having a really high solo queue win rate. Mummy was actually second, um, believe it or not, and he's really, really good. You know, in these types of scenarios, you know, when you get all of the Alistars and the Malphites and the Nautiluses that aren't banned out, but when you get a lot of the you know the tanky AOE junglers kind of banned out, mummy is a great option. You know, he. He's abusable, and if you can shut down his jungle really, really hard. Um, he's he's the original chance. tanky yeah. initiator jungle. Like, there was no one before Mummy. There was Mummy. That was it. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, Malphite's always been around, but Malphite jungle wasn't that great, specifically in the old jungle. It was slower. And Mummy, back in the old days, the jungle, had, jungle minions had a ton of hit points, and Mummy was like, I don't care because my tears cry through all this stuff uh mummy fell out of favor because he wasn't as strong as the other junglers because one of his initiation tools was that his skill shot uh his bandage toss that he had really monstrously long cooldowns which he still has but um uh, like his he was he was an old skilled his he his was developed under the old old school rules which meant they had like higher cooldowns at lower level ranks but once the jungle changed he kind of fell out of favor the reason he came back was that he got tweaked a little bit, but he's still very strong. The fact you can initiate with his ult, with then land an easy bandits toss. Uh, you can now max um, tantrum instead of tears first throughout the jungle, so you have just as fast jungle clear. And now you actually do damage in team fights uh, at earlier levels. So I mean, Mummy is you know he's still a strong, viable jungle. Uh, pick and if you know if you're someone like a bam who has been playing mummy since mummy's been or you know was out and still to this day plays mummy um i'm glad to see him make a comeback you know and be popular though in the other jungle i'd like to see come back and be popular is ramus yeah i mean ramus was a lot of He's fun super out of favor right now um used to be banned all the time so I actually gonna... like the team comps that we keep seeing from No Name Too Lazy. What I've kind of realized in this team comps is he's definitely more geared towards, um, you know, what you know what is like a good cohesive team AOE damage. They like all their stuns. They really like this Ash Tark combo, obviously, and Tark very very strong champion right now. Um, and then on the other t team, I kind of look at um, GG Ice's team. I think he's like, okay, guys, like, which are the what are the characters that you're best at playing? that you're going to be able to try to like win your lane and carry hard with and we're going to try to like you know have these individuals kind of carry us and that's the kind of mentality i kind of get um 
from his team makeup where I definitely seen from No Name Too Lazy his last game in this team. It's definitely like what you know, what's the cohesive idea behind our team. Yeah, um you hit the nail on the hammer, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> I screwed it up on purpose, just so you know. Uh, but, uh, I mean, if if you take a look at this champ selection, they've got multiple ways for initiation. They went with a double AP comp with the ability to initiate at range with Ash Arrow. But, you know, looking at, you know, what makes what's a good strength for double AP comp? Well, first off, its weakness is that it's all ability power, so the enemy team can just stack magic resist. On top of stacking magic resist, they've got Soraka and AoE heals. But if you take a look at how that works with Mummy in that composition, Mummy reduces magic resist. You take Mummy with his uh, his passive auto attacks, and then you throw an Abyssal Scepter on there, you better be stacking hella magic resist. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be eating, um, you're going to be held in place, you're going to get destroyed by Rumble's Equalizer. By the way, Process has been playing a lot of Rumble. I checked out his match history. Uh, and then I you've like got... Even more now. Oh, and speaking of MR Shred, you've got Karthus, yeah. uh, whose AoE is just all up in your face, and if he, bat, you know, if he dies, he's still going to be up in your face, and then he's going to, you know, and then he's going to ult you. Yeah, I mean, Wall of Pain combined with Mummy, they can take a lot of uh, MR right off of you. And they actually have a lot of armor shred because between Heart Shatter and Wall of Pain, because uh, Wall of Pain actually takes MR, MR and armor, like, they can actually, in a team fight reduce a lot of armor and MR from the enemy's team. Like, like pretty much like a full Negatron cloak or, you know, Chain Vest just gone. Um, and that's what's really scary about this team, especially with people like Rumble or Karthus. Like, that's a lot of damage. That's really scary. Um, uh, and as Griffel has shown us or demonstrated us in round one, um, a good solid Aurelia will beat Rumble. Um, we did see that in round one where Griffel carried really hard on Aurelia in round one. So we're going to see another Rumble Aurelia matchup. Uh, I like the Ari Karthus matchup. I actually think, um, I'm interested. I'm pretty sure Ari has an advantage in this matchup. But we'll see. Majestics was really good on Twisted Fate earlier. And if I take a look at his match history, he's been playing a lot of Karthus. Um, and by a lot, I mean a lot. <laughs> he's got four you know, Karthus plays in his last you know, ten games. Yeah, so just real quick, I want to give a shout-out. Lo and behold, we've spoken about it all night, but from New York City, we have... The one and only Hey Kelso in our chat. So everybody type little hearts to her. She deserves them. She's our awesome mod that's normally on here handing out prizes and helping us out. Um, so show her some love, guys. It looks like she already has been shown some love. She's posting about it uh, already. And, uh, again, um, thank you guys for joining us, obviously, tonight. <laughs> the the rise of her fan club. But anyways, yeah, really excited about this game. Um Team No Name Too Lazy taking on Team GG Ice. Pretty much how I, I how I thought uh, it would pan out in my perfect world uh, is kind of how it's come to through in judgment, and I'm really excited for this game because I like both of these teams. Definitely feeling um, the blue team, but you know GG Ice has been playing some great games. So a little, out, uh, little, just to interrupt different. you real quickly, they're saying you're inaudible. Uh, I don't know if that's because they can't hear you say how much you heart Hey Kelso or if you're just low in volume. Some people say they can hear you just fine, though, so I don't know. Maybe they just want you to stand up and scream, shout to the heavens. <laughs> well, I can turn it up real quickly just for funsies, uh, just in case. And we have a couple minutes to go. But, oh, by the way, surprise. So we're going to pick someone that actually asked us to do a KDA contest for them. And so Ooh. shout out. To Breeze Air, a.k.a. Summadis. He actually will be our KDA contest as Skarner in the jungle. So be creative with your guesses. Uh, last time he camped the crap out of Griffle and actually uh, did really, really well. So take your best shot at it. Guess the, you know, a jungler's kind of CS. Um, their kills, their effect on the game. He's feeling really confident. He's feeling it. He thinks he can win uh, a championship here. So go ahead, hop onto our Facebook. I just made the post. Comment on it. Guess his KDA. KDA and CS closest person will win a prize. Mm. And that will be a code into the next judgment, which will be judgment eight. Early entry into the next judgment? Oh, it's so amazing. 
an opportunity to avoid the 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 fact that it fills up in like ten minutes. Avoid the rush, the heat. Let's see. Scar, huh? I'm gonna go with. Two, three, and seven, about 150 CS. That's my verbal prediction. What was your, what was your prediction? Two, three, seven, about 150 CS. That's, you know, that's, that's pretty standard. I'm, gonna feel, I'm, I'm feeling he's going to have a pretty good game. I'm feeling maybe, I feel like a f four, three. Are you going to write this down? A four, three, and ten. This is a little, a little caster duel. I like <laughs> a it. A four, three, and ten with like a hundred and fifty-two CS or something like that. That's what I'm feeling. All right, write it down. Let's make it happen. <laughs> I will bet you one dollar <laughs> Canadian. High stakes. Oh crap. <laughs> but we have to pay through PayPal, so we'll like we'll lose it. So it won't even be a dollar by the time we're done. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Judgment PC number two, the battle for Canada, as it's been deemed. Uh, Our no final name too match lazy. No name too of lazy. the night. Yes, no name too lazy. Taking on GG Ice. GG Ice, a chance to you know put his name in the Hall of Fame. No name too lazy. Already been there twice. Wants to just you know, place his stamp on there. You know, say that he is the best captain slash player in Judgment history. Which, if he won this, uh, probably would be. Ooh. I mean, we had a lot of good runners. I mean, at the beginning of Judgment, I know uh, Dark Terrors won two Judgments back-to-back, -back, but uh, he hasn't been uh, played them recently or hadn't had a much success in recently. But No Name Too Lazy consistently, every time this guy's been in a Judgment, he's been kicking butt. So we'll just see how this pans out and see how his jungle goes. Looks like we have an early DC, possibly, so there is a really quick... Yeah, No Name Too Lazy apparently uh, has internet issues, so hopefully... That doesn't happen during a critical fight because it happened at like you know it happened right after the Baron fight and possibly during the Baron fight. Luckily, he was able to get off whatever he wanted to um, for them to win that fight. But if it comes to a critical situation, he's not there. That would be trouble. <laughs> so blue definitely in defensive posture. I'm interested to see if red uh, looks like they're not set up for it, but I'm interested to see if they would try to invade. Um, you know, like you said, uh, my forward start, I would probably. Uh, ward my own blue and actually go and try to invade a Moomin's blue, possibly. Yeah, I would. I would consider that uh, personally. Uh, if I know they have a blue dependent jungler, like a, a serious blue heavy jungler, a Mumu, uh, a big one. Although a Mumu actually does not quite necessarily one of those. Uh, I will absolutely hundred percent make sure I have an invade team. Like if they first pick a Mumu. I'm like, bam, insta-picking Tarek, or, you know, if Alistair's available, obviously, or maybe a Blitzcrank if I got up, you know. I'm like, we're going to screw over their jungle so bad. <laughs> I know a lot of people like to take Nocturne uh, against a Mamu and run. Uh, not, I don't even know if you need exhaust, but you can just, just be really aggressive with that early fear. But I just want to quickly say that after this match, we will have an interview with the captain and possibly their MVP. We'll bring them on call. Uh, we might get a quick... Uh, we might get an opportunity to take a quick minute with AOD's uh, The Help. Maybe we can see if we can get him on call. So yeah, definitely stay tuned after the final match here to get uh, just, just a quick player interview and uh, some interview with our special guest commentator a uh, from aod aero defect uh, the help he could tell us a little bit about what it's like to be the triple crown winner of songs of the summoned possibly uh give you a taste of uh, what you could experience at end of summerland september 22nd, exactly exactly 23rd. so definitely looking forward to that um he is casting uh the third and fourth place match between griffle and valiant uh on the rw media 2 channel so yep. You so you know, while that. this is paused, <laughs> yeah. you can just go watch that right now. Hell, I'm gonna tune into it right now, just because <laughs> I can. Um, it might be going for a hard restart. Uh, you know, if you're having connection issues, uh, he has Speaking reconnected. He's back. Thank you, Riot, for offering us pause feature. Because if we didn't have that, this game would be really sad right now. <laughs> 
possibly could have made the game more epic if they had a DC and then like had to take like that one shot 4v5 rushing their nexus like to win it. Yeah, so it looks like Mummy's just going to be able to farm up here uh, and do his normal jungle path. And Scar's going to be able to do the same. So good protection by both teams. No big invades. This is the finals. Um, kind of doing the, the gentleman's agreement here. No funny business when they start the game. And we're going to see a very familiar top lane matchup between Aurelia and uh, Rumble, which we saw earlier. And here we go. Karthus just checking out. Blue still being, they still don't trust it. They're like, no one would let us freely farm this. So giving a little help from both teams here. It's just to see what the leashes are like, if there is any kind of counter jungling movements uh, after this blue is taken. There's a potential Scar might get a really, really hard leash and try to pull a move of some sort on red buff have to see here probably I have imagined these are gonna be this is gonna be pretty standard uh, affair for both teams yeah I'm taking a look here uh, the smite was used by mummy and Skarner so and no kind of shenanigans I personally if I could get a hard leash from purple side on blue as Skarner and I could save smite go smite my rag and level 3 gank top doing it every time skarner has got a pretty slick level 3 gank um, when he used, uh, it, a lot of times people think, oh, I'm Skarner, I just sit in the jungle until I hit six, but um, his, I think it's like Crystalline Slash, when you hit the second effect, it's got a pretty strong slow, and then typically you have red buff. Um, what he may do is, you know, it looks like he's just going to avoid, oh, he started a regrowth pendant, never mind. So what I would do is I would actually start boots, three pots, get a hard leash on blue, save smite, Yada yada yada. Uh, that's typically what I would do, but because he didn't start boots, uh, a Momo on the other hand did. Uh, I might have started red as a Momo actually. I don't know. Just some things to think about. Um, you know, a lot of times people will you know theory craft. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what's the most optimal for me? Like I just like Here to have a game plan. The possible gank actually lower health. Or really doing that equilibrium strike gets the stun. Skarner trying to slow him down, but it looks like Process will be able to escape out of this. So good escape by him, and uh, you know, good setup by Reaper Face. Actually, you know, making sure he was lower, and then he could go and get that stun on Rumble. Yeah, I mean, and basically, you did exactly what you, you mean. Obviously, you didn't get the kill, but they burned the flash, and that's really the most important fact here is that they got rid of one of his escape mechanisms. Yeah, and you definitely want to put Rumble behind, like you said. He snowballs really hard. Although what we saw in the earlier matchup was is that uh, you know Griffle's ability to CS better than Rumble did. It was able to keep him actually give him a pretty big advantage there, and you know really can actually trade with Rumble, and, and do a lot of damage, and bully him around a little bit. It looks like the camping is beginning. Brazier, you know he did this. He he did this to Griffle. It looks like he's gonna come back and possibly with another camp fest, and it looks like we have another pause here, and we're going back. We're starting back up again apparently right away. The panic pause. Was it like he had to let the dog out? Yeah, I, I, that was a really quick letting the dog out. Uh, it looks like Rumble did go back, so camping up here is kind of a waste for Brazier at this point. Um, he's gonna have to go down and probably farm up some. Uh, and looking at Majestic, you know, the first, the game, last game we saw, he played uh, Twisted Fate, which is very much, you know, like I teleport around the map, I give, um, I, I can snowball my other lanes with that effect. Karthus is more like. I, instead of teleporting there and actually doing damage myself, I can just pop my alt, finish off low-end targets, um, kind of swing fights a little bit in the favor of the lane if the damage is close, and in effect lanes that way, meanwhile, it's going to sit mid and try to farm up as much as possible, while Arya, on the other hand, she's going to be uh, spirit rushing around, trying to rotate the names really qu quickly uh, and go roam out. So it's an interesting dynamic between both teams here. Here's the early Aurelia pressure where she can actually win these trades, although wow. Aurelia's coming up here. And just to see, you know, if this does go down, I Amuma's mean, actually going to miss his dodge. Process is going to take a lot of damage in the meantime. Take the ignite, and the kill will go to Reaper Face. And Reaper Face might be able to escape out. This is really, really close to dying, and the ignite will wear off. And No Name's just going to back off. He can't actually pursue under there. He will take way too much damage. Yeah, actually, he really had a two-level advantage on Rumble. Um... I think you know a lot of that partly because Rumble did go back uh, very very early and uh, really was just able to sit up there uh, in lane. 
looking very, very strong. Interesting to see, you know, when Brazier starts to, to make some more moves on the map. We definitely probably will see him top uh, eventually here again. And bottom lane, we have, you know, GG Ice. We've seen him play uh, AD before. His AD, not necessarily, you know, Griffle level. He tried to take on the Griffle as Urgot. Um, ended up losing that one. Uh, and <laughs> and you know, the Zin Zinfinity Sleeveless uh, combo that we've seen has been very, very successful. Although I think they're uh, in for possibly a little bit of stiffer confrontation down here. Uh, between uh, Ads, Adza and uh, GG Ice. Yeah, GG Ice is actually really scary. Um, uh, I know he likes to play aggressive, as you can see, the quick draw and a buckshot. So and he's going to be looking for opportunities to punish uh, Z, uh, Z Infinity. Yeah, Reaper Face just constantly punishing process whenever he has a chance to. Um, and like I said, you know. This early stage is, you know, Rumble really can't actually trade with her. He's going to lose all these trades, so he just needs to be really careful, really patient with his harpoons. Farm as well as he can. Um, probably get used to the fact that he might have to farm and turn a little bit. And then, you know, once he gets the chance, uh, possibly have No Name rotate up with him. Possibly get a better kink off this time. This is the last one where, uh, you know, No Name tried to make a guess with his uh, bandage toss, missed, and uh, Rumble was able to be killed uh, without a response. You know, I think if No Name Too Lazy would have held on to the bandage toss a little bit longer, waited for Rumble to get vision because he was diving in anyways, uh, possibly would have had a better chance to gank there. So definitely going to need some support up there because I feel like Reaper Face you know, is playing a pretty, pretty good Aurelia game right now. It has that level advantage. And I don't expect her to lose it quite yet, unless there's a little bit of support for Rumble up there. And good stuff yep. to GG Ice getting some free damage off from that exchange. That was actually really, really nice there. However, Sor the unfortunate part of Soraka just heals it all back. So here's what we're going to see. We've got Karthus with blue buff. He's uh, he's going to come back. He's going to come into his lane. He's going to try and keep this pushed so that um, Ari isn't getting out of lane. Although she's going to get out of lane right now to go grab blue buff. She'll probably l she might lose a creep wave. But I would love, you know, now that they are 6, they're going to wait for a moment to hit 6, and we're probably going to see a play either on bot lane um, or mid. Uh, and basically this is where the game is going to start to pick up. The The strategy for the blue team is they want to extend the game as long as possible. They have a really strong late game um, it, with the double AP comp. They're actually, uh, they want to extend laning phase. I'm going to kind of rephrase that. As it gets later in the game, it actually leans in favor of uh, of a heavy bruiser uh, and, and Graves as a carry. But in terms of mid to, mid to late game, uh, that's when they're going to be the strongest, as so long as they get through laning phase kind of unscathed um, by, you know, maybe you know, so the other team hasn't snowballed out of control. Yeah, and looking up here, it looks like Amumu is actually trying to sneak up on this top lane, although they do have a ward right there that will see him cross into the enemy jungle right now. It looks like some of this is just going to back off right now with his blue pill. And No Name not going to make a play there. He doesn't really have a play unless it really tries to commit onto Rumble. And there's the commit. Saw that uh, No Name went away. No Name going to try to run back. Maybe get baited back up there a little bit. But no. Just going to go and farm. Um, I think he senses there's whether he might come up lane. That could be the play right now. It looks like that might be what he's doing. The problem is, uh, even though he does his ult, I don't know if they're going to have enough damage to kill Aurelia. She might just kill Rumble. Um, in the process, I think I keep saying process because process is in this game. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Without equalizer, Mike, the process up, in yeah, the process. Yeah. yeah, without uh, without equalizer up, he probably they probably don't have enough damage uh, right there to take yeah. to take him out. But you know, it has a short cooldown, probably will up pretty quickly. It's like Skarner actually going to do the lane gank now. Um, some of this AK Bruzer wanted to get on the board. As we look here, uh, we can see the vision of blue team. They're not going to see him get in there. But, it's, of course, right as he's going up there for a gank again, Rumble blue pilling back. He almost has, like, a, a, a spider sense to know uh, when to back off from the ganks. The gank is the gank camping is happening. But I'm really going to get out of lane. Um, yeah, I'm really interested to see. I, I'm thinking maybe one of these teams needs to make a play possibly on uh, an objective. Not necessarily Dragon, but possibly on a blue buff. If they can get it going, I'm looking at top lane blue buff, you know, Karthus' blue buff. I think it's vulnerable with the fact that it really has been able to push around Rumble quite a bit here. I, mm -hmm. I think that could be a play for them in the future and kind of give Ari a leg up so that she can push these lanes and get out of lane. Because right now, Karthus can freely just farm and push this lane, counter push the lane, and he's perfectly fine to sit here and just play this game all day long. Um, right now, it's 83 CS to 76, so he actually is a little bit ahead in CS. Berserk, again, camping, but Karthus doesn't have to go in. Like, 
Karthus' goal is just to sit here and farm. Like, he isn't... Like, Ari's going to have to initiate something or make something happen before Karthus is even going to play. But, oh, there we go. Great grab. Smart grab. Auto Majestics is just going to flash out of this. Ari dashing in there past the wall. Dashes past Majestics. And they should be able to take him out. They will take him out. Some of this is going to be able to escape out of this. Alt's going to come in. It's not going to get a kill on either player right there, especially with the Skarner shield. And that alt, I, know, I feel like that alt was kind of like a frustration alt. It's like, I died, I'm going to alt. Like, yeah, yeah don't know. I definitely felt the same way. I thought he was going to be a little bit safe. Um, I knew Skarner was looking to flash alt. Ooh, some damage here going on GG Ice and Atza. He is exhausted. He is not going anywhere. Is the Infinity going to pick up that? Here comes the flash. Should be a double kill. And great, uh, you know, turret aggro swap right there. Sleeveless, you know, just taking it all the way, tanking that turret aggro. And, and this kind of gives you an example of why, um, uh, you know, so Skarner is really good at ganking one player, you know, like I made her top. Amumu doesn't care. Amumu gives zero Fs. He just straight up rolls in there, hits two people with the Ash Arrow and the Tarek Stun. I mean, it was just a brutal gank. And you're going to see that happen consistently later on. As team fights happen and develop over um, other other areas such as Dragon or uh, Baron, you know, and something we don't see from GGIS too is you know, like you said, he wants to be more aggressive, but he doesn't actually have a cleanse or anything, so he's completely open to those stun combos. And you know, a triple stun is a surefire kill, and right there is worth two kills uh, for their team with all that AOE and stun action. Um, so that's kind of a liability now in this bottom lane, and. I can't help but think, like, especially with the Karthus, you know, if he gets fed up, you know, I'm kind of liking the blue team's chances uh, as far as their team's looking at this point. And if they can really take advantage of this bottom lane and those kills, it, it could be real big trouble for red team as we get later in this game. Yeah, I think, I mean, again, it's going to come down, and it's going to be a similar to our round one match that we watched. I think uh, Aurelia can turn into a really strong late game carry. Uh, and if she gets really far ahead. And, you know, so far she's doing a pretty good job. Um, you know, about 90 CS, already has that early wits in. Typically you go for, like, a phage uh, first to get that slow. But, that slow proc. But, you know, 90, she's 40 CS ahead of Rumble. She's got the kill. Um, she's not going to be many, missing in many last hits. She might pick up another kill here. Um, if she had a phage or a phage proc, she Ooh, definitely would get the kill. heavy dive bottom lane. GG is actually stunned underneath turret. Should be able to live. Sleeveless running for his life now. GGI is just tanking like a boss. Sleeveless is being pulled out a little bit, healing himself. They're actually wasting a lot of time here, but they will actually pick up the kill. Persistence pays off. A lot of players low right now. Karthasol actually would not kill uh, some of this at this point. And they even have an Ari, and it looks like they're going to go for a dragon too. Blue not in the area. Karthus just going over to get his own blue buff. Amumu is having to rotate top to pick up for the fact that Rumble did die. And uh, so this should be a dragon for red team. And actually, you know, good response to the the two, the two kill bomb. They came back, were able to pick up a kill of their own, and they're going to be able to take this dragon, uh, which is going to help them uh, get a little bit more ahead as they sit up about 2k advantage right now. So Karthus, you know, real, recognizing that, hey, can't really get out there to, um, you know, you know, can't really stop that dragon attempt. Not going to be able to make a, you know, a play top or anywhere. Uh, is going to go ahead and just farm. Looks like he got one, you know, he got his race. He went ahead and shoved an entire creep wave into the turret. So he's going to try and hit that level, uh, actually is level 11 now. This is great. Uh, this is where he wants to be uh, when the next team fight goes down. And, and now that he has his ult available to him. Um, they won't have to worry so much about Dragon because Dragon's gone. Uh, but, you know, meanwhile, looking at the blue team, they're down about 2k gold, which is basically that Dragon and two kills. But they've got all their turrets up. Um, you know, they still have, you know, Amumu's ult is up. Ash's ult is about to come up. You've got Karthus ult. Like, they're about to make a play. Uh, probably here on bot lane, which, which looks to be where they have that that really strong, consistent CC. Uh, and I think exact, that's exactly what we're going to see. Yeah, GGI's making a good call right there, realizing Zinfini was a little bit out of position and goes in there, put a lot of damage, process under a lot of pressure again. And he really needs a lot of help. He really, it's at the point now where he can't sit up in top lane at all, pretty much, underneath his turret. He's going to get farther behind until either, you know, his turret falls or the laning phase breaks down and he's able to farm freely while, you know, the rest of the red team is, you know, on the map somewhere else. 
So Tarek placed a pink ward here in their own personal bot brush. And it looks like a Momo's going to be able to sneak in, no problem. They don't know if it's awarded, but it won't matter. If they see Soraka, she's going to go down. Here comes the yeah, Momo ult. Good, goodbye, GGS. <laughs> but Zinfinity getting really close to falling there. It's not going to happen. Soraka can teleport all she wants, but it's not going to happen. Uh, here we go. The Karthus ult coming in here. The grab, possibly. Try to pull him underneath her, but there's not enough damage left there. Ari has actually rotated down there. Now they need to be a little bit scared because Ari can't actually put down the damage to turn this around. Scar doesn't have actually any minute to back this up, although they could put down a hit after a nice charm, which there it is. Sleeveless going to go down right here. No name too lazy getting off a stun uh, on Skarner, but not able to put any damage in there to get the kill. And that is that good response, actually, uh, from the red team. Ari rotating down and making something happen out of that. And there's another kill top. And I, I, feel, I feel sorry for Process because this is like one of those, you know, those top lane scenarios where it's like they really, you know, they're trying to win other lanes at this point and they really can't give you much support. But at the same time, uh, even underneath this turret, it's going to start to get risky for them, uh, which is the scary part uh, whenever you're playing top lane. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, I think some of us have been in that position before where it's like, hey, you know, we're down two or three kills. We just can't stay in lane. Uh, we're going to lose out on farm. Uh, my suggestion is try and give up that top turret. Uh, hopefully they can force that and then go try and make a play in another lane. Um, or dragon. Yeah, you know, go help your team make a play on dragon. Obviously dragon though was taken. So his options are very, very low. And Reaper Fate is actually farming behind the turret. He wants to leave that turret up as long as possible because he knows right now it's just giving him an advantage at this point uh, to have that turret up and deny his opponent CS repeatedly. As we look at the CS uh, between them, Aurelia 137, Rumble only 72. He's down, you know, almost double CS disadvantage at this point. Looks like a little bit of a jungle invade uh, from some of this. And he might rotate down bottom and try to make a play. Um, Griffel's actually been playing a lot of these exchanges with these stuns really, really well, uh, using his smoke screen. Uh, in response to the Dazzle particle as it comes out to actually cover the vision of the enemy team. And Sneaky Sneaky Brazier is going to come in here, pull out this Ash, put a lot of damage on it, get a really quick flash out of this, and they're going to take too much turret damage, and they might be able to push him back, but uh-oh, GGI's taking a lot of turret aggro. Ash Arrow coming in, heals coming in, uh, but GGI's will fall a little too aggressive there. No name too lazy. Great ult just picking off Soraka barely. They will get that kill as well. Apple Fire now trying to duel, but Karth is actually rotating in here, getting down that slow. Apple Fire is very, very slow. Will he land the Q? That is the key. And I don't know if it's going to be enough. Apple Fire might be able to get out of this. The ult coming in. Will she survive? No, she won't. There's the kill. And now Sleeveless in trouble, getting chased down by some of Summoners wants some kills for his KDA ratio, but the counter stun just barely misses by a pixel. And Summoners is going to have to back off out of this and run home. But luckily, he has survived. Meanwhile, Reaper Face taking that top turret and probably going to press towards the second turret as well. Um, and a lot of action right there, finally, as we heat up. Uh, yeah, that was... 19 minutes into the game. And basically every time we see, if you take a look at the left hand side of your screen, every time you see those alts come up for those players, that's exactly what we're going to see. Every time Karthus ult is up with the Mamu ult and Ash Arrow, we're going to see that every time. And whether it's bot lane, whether it's mid, uh, whether it's in response to the team coming down, and Aurelia is just being a bully. Not only is she bullying Rumble, she's also coming in here, she's taking that blue buff away from Karthus. And, you know, we talked about it, this is what they're going to want to do. They may lose these some of these skirmishes that go in favor of the blue team, you know, here in bot lane or mid, but Aurelia is going to come in there and she's going to be a an amazing late game just dominating individual. She's a dream wrecker cuz you know, they have these <laughs> they have this dream of winning the, you know, the judgment championship, but Aurelia's going to go over there and she's going to wreck the dream. She's going to kick him, <laughs> kick him down to the ground, stomp on him, squish him, destroy him, tear him apart and turn them into nightmares and right now red setting up for this dragon they think they have it timed uh, just perfectly graves a little bit late ggi is trying to show off there be like i know exactly it's going to come up now all right you didn't see that we're gonna get dragon still though and the announcer is <laughs> probably going to tell us even though we're looking at it that the red team just got a dragon <laughs> i guess it's kind of handy though in case for steals i actually kind of like that uh side of it skarner uh smiting that as a good uh as a good uh, jungle should he actually has an oracle, I believe, 
uh, on him at this point, which is going to really help with the, the map warding uh, strength in this game. Yes, yes, he does have an Oracle. Uh, blue team, uh, yeah, no name too lazy has picked up an Oracle as well. So, and you just see the map, the, the ward battles that are going to go down now is we're going to start to shift our focus as we get later in this game towards, you know, Baron. And the blue team, like we were talking about earlier, like they, their team team composition wise, they're really, really strong. Like they have all this AOE CC, you know, as you said, you know, when you see all those alts up, it's go time. And that's when they're really going to come with add Serpentine. Uh oh, it's the infinity. Serpentine. <laughs> oh, that Amumu ult is up. He decided not to use it. Yeah, no I think they were a little worried about Ari coming down here. Uh, that he probably didn't want to force a fight now that he's got that Oracles. Yeah, Sorak actually doing a good job of actually da dodging the bandage toss right there. <laughs> Just walking back and forth, having no name to miss it. Um, might have been a little bit of trouble there. It's like Karth is actually rotating down here too to possibly support this because they know there might be a dive on bottom. So they've rotated, they set the position. Uh, Take a look at the left hand side of your picture because <laughs> there's a lot of. <laughs> it's go time. Oh, stun on GG Ice. But they're not going to follow it up. But uh oh, Amumu coming in from behind. Actually going to get a stun off on some of this. When is he going to pop? It's always going to pop it now. But Ari's coming in from the back. It looks like Wall of Pain going to shred some of that armor. No name too lazy. Very, very low. No. And Zinfinity have been actually been backed off way far. Else. But Karthus is doing ridiculous amounts of damage. Take this down. Now he's going to ult. But he oh. ults. He ults before he dies. He ulted. He got too cocky. He gets charmed out of it. But now can they? Oh, wow. Zinfinity very, very bold there. Actually face checking the Skarner. Still a triple kill, and Reaper Face says, what's the best thing I can do at this point? Uh, push this turret. Taking a page out of Griffle's book. That was a great Fish. little fight there, and you know, one of the key moments is obviously Karthus. He got a little excited seeing that he was going to get uh, possibly a quadra kill or something, even though he ended up with a triple kill. And he started his ult before he died, which is not what you want to do. Um, any CC can cancel it as a channeling ult, which is usually why you see players, when they die, use the ult. Um, right there, and if he had, you know, just taken the hit, died, and then used it, uh, maybe it would have been a little bit better. At least it wouldn't have got canceled. But smart heads up play. Have to give props to Apple Fire. Go in there. She definitely recognized that it was going down. She could cancel it and punished him a little bit for it, but still got the job done. And what you saw right there is, you know, Karthus. He's all he's been doing is farm. He has 202 CS. He has the highest farm in the game, and he's just farming, farming. Shout out to Tony Majestics again. He's doing his job really, really well right here, and. That's where a lot of the damage in that team fight came from. You saw Zen Infinity and uh, Amumu back off right away. Oh, great stun over the wall by No Name Too Lazy on GG Ice trying to catch him underneath that turret. Interesting wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I really like what the red team's doing here. They're pressuring red mid or this mid turret. It's going to open up an attempt for Baron um, or and or Dragon. It's basically going to give them map control. They've actually got five here now that Rumble's top and Ash is bot. So they could pressure this even further, especially if they can pick off No Name Too Lazy, which is what they want to do. Oh, he's still uh -oh, going in. I don't know why he's going in. Underneath turret and Karthus possibly going in there again, just putting a lot of damage underneath turret, but good poke back actually by the red team. So two turrets have gone down by blue team. They were going to take bot and top turret. Looks like Rumble's just going to blue pill back and uh, start to support his team as Red looks like they want kind of want to push in here, get a lot of damage on this turret. And they might, actually might be able to take it down. There's only two members here. They actually have this. So I really like this play from them. This is really smart heads up play. Super time Scarlet's to flash out. Out. Here comes oh, the equalizer down. Nice. That's a good catch, but if Karth is able to follow up with any kind of real damage, they're actually underneath the enemy turret, which is still up right now. Rumble trying to chase down this has the ignite onto Ari. He's able to pick it off. GGI is turning around, trying to make something happen. Zinfinity is left all alone. No name too lazy coming here with the all Soraka heal coming in. Say, hey, oh, you thought you maybe had kills? Nope, sorry, buddy. You don't. You're just going to get chased down and murdered. And there you have it. Red might pick off another base turret here. And Karthus is the only one up. He's healed up. He's going to have to run back out here. And he might be able to defend the inhibitor, possibly, but I'm not sure. And great play by the red team. Getting really crazy in that dive. I think he should avoid this because if he gets silenced. And... Oh, he's going to get the kill. He's not going to be able to get two kills, though. So in Dominion style. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he definitely defended the net here. This is great. They're, oh, Reaper Face so close to going down. Uh, would have been a nice kill spree bonus. So what they're going to want to do, they're going to want to respawn, group up. They're going to want to try and get map control, and they're going to want to force a fight at Baron. Because right now, uh, with Karthus being 16, uh, it'd be better if Rumble was also 16. But this is the strongest they're going to be in comparison to the enemy team. 
And once those alts are all up, they're going to want to force a team fight, uh, specifically at Baron, um, if at all possible. But definitely force another team fight because they are really strong once they can layer all those alts. But right now, if they're split or separated, they're not very strong at all. Yeah. Uh, so I think if they can get bot lane pushing, so this would be great. If they can get map control here, so the wards are really good. I really like sleeve, what Sleeveless is doing. He's constantly warding. He's had that early map control. He knows when to pink ward. Um, if they can get bot lane pushing, don't freeze it, but just get it pushing. Back up, force a team fight at Baron, give up this dragon. There's nothing they can do about it. Uh, that would be the, the best strategy they can do. Yeah, I definitely agree. That's probably their best option at this point. Uh, Rubble is actually still split pushing top, putting a lot of pressure there. And Red definitely will take out this dragon. GGI is coming down, pushing back that lane just a little bit. Blue taking a little bit of defensive position. They're actually over a ward here. The main problem for Blue right now is they actually don't have an Oracle. So even if they wanted to try to set up a Baron, they need something else to just kind of to ward out and protect themselves. Uh, as they go yeah, in there both, and make a reason both, for ooh, Red to come. Uh-oh, No Name Too Lazy. Going to be that, caught out was... here. And will he be able to flash over? No, he won't. Some of this making sure that he is locked down. And Rumble is pushing top, but he has to blue pill back now. And I don't necessarily know if that was the best use of Rumble. I mean, they got him some experience. They did get to push. You know, that was the good part of that. But the, the other part of it is they have no way to defend at all now. And actually, you know, No Name Too Lazy getting picked off is a really, really big problem. So now they're going to have to go into another familiar scenario where it's enemy team going for Baron, and you're going to have to try to use your AoE ults, but you know they have no vision on the map, and red team's setting up. They know that there's probably going to be a chase here. Oh, this is a probate. Oh, oh, no. Good wall there. Good wall of pain to actually gain vision, much like in Anivia. They have a ward there. There's still, though. Oh, great lay waste. Check oh, right there. Ult. Good rumble ult. That's going to get them low enough. This is good poke here. If they do get into a team fight here, they just need a moment to come back. A moment's all is up. Sleeveless, you this can forfeit your life. Yeah, this is what they want. Karthus is going to go in there and do some AoE damage. This is what they want. Amumo not quite getting everybody. Karthus ult coming in now. GGI's needs to be dealt with. He will be dealt with. Applefire now going to have to run for her life. Another good bandage toss out of here, and she is done. Really, really close. He's actually going to back off out of this. And good fight there. They are just ward off Baron. And there is the strength. Their ults. And they even piecemealed it. You know, they gave up Sleeveless. Um, Karthus had to go in necessarily before uh, Amumu was quite there yet. But, you know, and, you know, Rumble had to come out preemptively. But great job by them. Almost kind of reversed what happened to them uh, from the red team. Because red team earlier when this all started, they all started snowballing, taking down those turrets. You know, they were able to poke and whittle down their opponents and back them off. And then start a fight. You know, we saw the opposite from Blue there, using their alts very, very good. Uh, you know, lowering their health and then getting off. You know, their AOE uh, team fight where they're really, really strong. By the way, shout outs to our good friend David Booth who brought me a nice. Is that a brandy? Is that a? No, it's a. Right. Ooh, a nice <laughs> bourbon. <All right>. So <laughs> 17 to 18 kills, 5k ahead is the red team. Oh, really close game. <laughs> yeah, it's a really, really close game. And uh, top lane's auto-pushing for them, middle lane's pushing for them. They're getting bottom lane pushing GGIs and some of this. And then they're going to probably rotate over. And they can actually, you know, red's in a really strong position now to make plays on any objective they want to do. Um, they definitely have catching power. You know, Apple Fire throws out a charm, catches anybody they want to. Um, they could make a play that way. If No Name Too Lazy gets caught again, you know, that's a big... Sticking Rumble is going to want to be, be very, with very their careful. team. Yes. Uh, no, more, no more split push. I think he was trying to you know, push off that lane a little bit so it wasn't quite auto-pushing on them. But they can still, you know, red team has all the the map advantage. I mean, blue doesn't have a ward anywhere up here. They pretty much only had Karthus last time to give them vision. Looks like GG Ice is making the call here for Baron. Um, whether or not he knows it, this is the right call. They have no vision. They're actually taking Baron really quick. Baron at about half health. Blue team's trying to respond. They see it going down, but it looks like if they get there, it's going to be too late because Baron is going to be go. down. They're going to go. They're all locked in that tunnel. Oh, oh no. going in. I don't know if the call was quiet on there. Equalizer is going to hop into the exit of Baron. They're going to put down as much AoE alt as they can. Carter's going to die. They all flash out the back, which is probably the best choice for them, really. Otherwise, they would have been stuck in that Karth assault. So really smart play by them. Reaper face coming and cleaning up the pit. And now Process trying to run for his life, but I don't think it's going to work He's out for done, him. Sir. And, and with that, that ace, that's pretty much the game. All the other players are going to be down for a good 25 seconds from here on out. Actually, some 30, 40 seconds longer. Uh, they could push down mid, but I think what they're going to do is they're going to take the second inhibitor. They'll probably, I don't 
think they can finish the game right here, but they'll take the second hitter. They're going to back to base. Oh, they actually might go for it. I think it. This is gutsy, and I like it. Tarek and Ash will be up in about four seconds, but it probably won't be enough because you've got the whole team here. And by the way, if you guess 0, 4, and 11 for Skarner. <laughs> <laughs> Solid guesses. Oh, Sleeveless being torn apart. Yeah, they're just going to press in here. Then the Carla's trying to put out as much all as they can. They don't have alts left up from that last team fight. No Name trying to do work as best as he can. Zinfinity kiting pretty well here onto Reaper Phase. Reaper Phase coming back in here, but Zinfinity should get this. It's going to be really, really close. Rumble's actually going to actually clean it up and now try to push off the enemy team. It's only a really low Soraka and Ari and some of this in the meantime. And will they be able actually going to pull Rumble out into the enemy team? The charm will miss, though, if the actual charm was on point. Would have definitely had this. I'm pretty sure Soraka's just there to try to bait the rumble at this point, and they should be able to kill this Nexus. They're pressing it home, being unrelenting in their pressure right now on the enemy team. Process trying to come out here, trying to put some damage on some of this. Some of this doesn't care, just putting as much damage as he can on this enemy uh, Nexus right now. Tark coming out. He's finally respawned. We have 10 seconds, 8 seconds before the rest of the team can come in here. And all, really all they need to do is just put a focus auto attack damage this Nexus. They will get it. And the winners, GGI is not becoming a Cardius. He is going to become a Hall of Fame champion. GGI is winning judgment BC number.